Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this amazing journey. Let's talk about our faith and our beliefs. You know, a lot of Muslims, they ask a lot of questions about beliefs and faith. And that's amazing. That's where everything starts, just like a building. But one thing that we don't ask about too often is what about the character? Because when you read the entire Qur'an, you find that in the Qur'an, no matter what belief is stated or whatever act of worship is stated, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He connects it to some kind of character development in ourselves. Everything has a purpose. We don't just have faith without practice. And one of the greatest things that our Prophet, peace be upon him, said is that he has been sent to perfect our character. So, I want to take you with me on a journey. A little series. Let's make it a mini-series. A series from Surah Al-Hujurat. Have you ever heard of Surah Al-Hujurat? It's a beautiful surah. And it focuses on our character and practices. You know, I get a lot of non-Muslims who often ask me, well, what about you guys? Do you walk the talk? Or is it just about faith and how amazing Islam is? And sometimes I get a little bit embarrassed because the truth to be told, I find a lot of our brothers and sisters sometimes will unintentionally neglect the practice part and the character part. But Alhamdulillah, we always do advise one another because we love one another. So the surah that I want to take you on a journey with me with is Surah al hujurat the verses from six onwards. And you'll find about eight different characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. The first one that I want to go with you today is verse number six. Let's do it. Allah says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. In ja'akum fasiqum bi naba'in fatabayyanu. An tusibu qawman bi jahala. Fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. So Allah says, Believers, O oh believers, when an impious person comes to you with a news about something that is negative, especially if it's about someone or a community, clarify, ascertain, and make sure about the news correctly, lest you should hurt a people unintentionally or unwittingly is probably the best word. Unwittingly is without knowing the whole picture. And then you become repentant and regretful over what you did. You know, brothers and sisters, this verse is tremendous. It can make or break a community. It can make or break a person. It can make or break a family. It's everything. Have you ever heard of people say bad news about yourself? And then you think to yourself, but I didn't do it. These people are misconstruing. They're, they're taking things out of context. A lot of it happens on social media as well. A lot of people just watch a clip or they hear something about someone and without verifying or even questioning themselves whether they should verify or not, they immediately just make comments, make clips, spread misinformation about someone or sometimes part truth and part false without really knowing exactly what they're doing. We've all fallen into that one time or another in our life. And this verse of the Qur'an is actually read in two different ways. It's amazing because some of the Qur'an, the words can be, wor can be worded in one way or another, and they all came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'll give you an example. There is a word in that verse which I just recited where it says, فَتَبَيَّنُوا which literally means then clarify. Clarifying means to know and sift what is fact from fiction, what is truth from false. And you can also read it as فَتَثَبَّتُوا فَتَثَبَّتُوا means make sure that it's act that it's factual. So make sure that it actually happens and clarify and understand the whole situation. I'll give you an example. Let's say I saw a married brother where a woman entered his car and he drove off. And I know this brother has a wife and that didn't look like his wife. The shaitan will come to me and say, okay, you just saw something. And you're not lying. You really saw a fact. That's called tathabbatu. Tathabbatu means there is a fact. I saw it's real. But that's not enough. Allah says fatabayyanu, which means clarify what actually happened. 
Maybe it is his wife. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe he's a, an Uber driver. Perhaps it's a neighbor that needs to go to the hospital. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. And there are so many excuses and possibilities that could have happened. We don't know the full picture. But to go and jump to conclusions and say, for example, this person is committing adultery, God forbid, or is being uh, unfaithful to his wife, this is a tremendous accusation. And imagine what happens after that. I don't think anybody is happy to be accused of something without being having it clarified or verified. You know, the next thing after this verse is quite interesting and it really intrigued me. Allah also says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and know that the messenger of God is with you. I'll tell you the context behind this verse. This verse came down about an incident at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where we don't know exactly what his name was. Uh, however, he went to a tribe called Banil Mustaliq, and they had just converted to Islam. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, told him to go and teach him about zakat and to collect the zakat money from them for the community. When he went there, it seemed like this particular companion, this particular person had uh, a problem with this tribe before Islam. So he got a bit scared that they might ambush him or something. He didn't tell anybody about it. So he decided to come back and not visit the tribe and make up a lie about them out of fear. So we said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, they don't want to pay the zakat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, took that information. And what happened is before he acted upon it, a group of other Muslims rounded themselves around the Prophet ﷺ and started to give an emotional account saying, yeah, this man, he's telling the truth and imagine if it's the truth and imagine if we don't um, go and, and take action. And they started to fuel the Prophet ﷺ with emotions. And I think we can all relate to that. And even though he's the messenger of Allah, he believes his companions and some of them, they abstained. So before the Prophet peace be upon him took action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this verse and said, and know that among you is the messenger of Allah. If he were to obey you, he says, in الأمر, if he were to obey you in all the matters that you present to him, you would have fallen into terrible catastrophe. Sometimes we approach really good people, imams, shaykhs, and we tell them a story about someone, some clip that we saw online about another imam, let's say, or a da'i, or just a random person. And we may fuel our shaykhs, our imams, let's say even in our own household, you come up to your own father or mother and say something about your brother and sister, maybe you have something in for them, or maybe there's jealousy, or maybe sometimes a shaitan may give us some other ideas about it, maybe there's revenge, and our, we, we may get emotional about it, and sometimes we may say the things that we don't really want to say, causing our father or mother who is loving to assume the wrong thing, and then we make them afraid and they take action, and after that we regret it. Has that ever happened to you? Well, it happened with the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, verify and clarify before you take action. The tribe then came to him and uh, they told him that this is not true, a messenger of Allah. And it was a good thing that they abstained before they took a measure. Now, one important thing about this verse that people misunderstand is that it says, if an unpious person or an ungodly person, a fasik, a corrupter comes to you with news, a lot of people think, well, if I know this person to be truthful, then I'm just going to take action. And they misunderstand that because, look, for example, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu there was an incident with Abu Bakr, for example, and Rabi'ah, who were both amazing companions. Abu Bakr said something to Rabi'ah and, and then uh, he said to Rabi'ah, say it back to me, I shouldn't have said that word. And, and then Abu Bakr goes to the Prophet Sallallahu to complain about it because Rabi'ah refused to say the word back to him. And the point of this story is when Rabi'ah reached the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet had heard the news from Abu Bakr and he is an honest man. He's not a corrupt or an un unpious person. But then he said to Rabi'ah, what's between you and Abu Bakr? He wanted the clarification between them. And he said, well, this and that happened. And then the Prophet said to him, did you say the word back to him? And he said, no. He said, good. Say, may Allah forgive you, Abu Bakr. The point of that is that it's not just a person who is unpious, but sometimes you do need to clarify the situation if you're going to take action. And one very, very important aspect of this, brothers and sisters, is um, one very important aspect of this is uh, you need to see whether you should take action or not. Is the matter that serious? Is there a consequence for someone's reputation, blood, life, property, before you take action, is it really necessary? One very important thing that I find good brothers and good sisters do, especially if they really want to please Allah, is to defend Islam and to defend the reputation of Islam. So sometimes 
they might unintentionally or even intentionally with the wrong intentions. Maybe some of them hold a bit of a group mentality or a cult mentality and then attack people based on a word or a statement or a video clip that someone shared with them and they don't have the full context. They don't know what happened before, what happened after, but they see something that's really concerning. So what happens? They go and tell their shaykh or their imam a story. They fuel him with emotions. The imam or shaykh gives them the right answer, but that's based on what they've told them, you see. And I've been in a situation before where my imam or my teacher, I'd come up to them and depending on how I present the story about that person, my imam will answer me. You know, a great companion, I don't want to misquote him, so I'm just going to quote it over here and read it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He talks about this aspect and he says, and it is not the right of anyone to make takfir, for example. You know, some people, they say, oh, that means they're a kuffar, that means they're people of bid'ah, they're innovators, they are deviant, and all these names that get called up. So he says, and it is not the right of anyone to make takfir on any Muslim, even if he had erred until the argument of truth has been clarified and explained to him first. Then he says, whoever is known to be a Muslim with certainty, then it, meaning his Islam, cannot be removed from him by merely assumption and speculation. And it says, in fact, his Islam cannot be removed from him except after the truth has been shown to him in clarity and any doubt, any doubt and confusion is removed. This is from his Majmu' al fatawa I've got it at home and um, on my bookshelf. And it says, you know, chapter 12, number 466. This is Ibn Taymiyyah, one of the greatest scholars of all time, says, I'm not going to judge a person no matter what I see of them until I've sat with them. You know, this is tremendous, tremendous, tremendous character and advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his scholars. Because if you love for your brother, what you love for yourself, then it means you love your deen and you love your Islam. And you want things to be better. Not just to call out people for something that they did ambiguously and without verifying it. But of course, if some people are like that, we do have to call them out. But be very, very careful. I hope, insha'Allah, we've learned something from this. I love you. Fi sabilillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.